Hello, Paul Ellis from The Rick Group here. I'm going to give you a webinar on our supply chain solution for SAP Business One called SBO4. The Rick Group was established in 2001 and we've got customers all over the world, including from Australia, New Zealand, North America, Asia, Middle East and Africa. With SAP Business One HANA, our warehouse management solution uses the service layer to integrate. And with SAP Business One SQL, we use the DI API to integrate. <clears throat> Please note that both with HANA and SQL, our warehouse management solution is certified. The majority of our customers are in distribution and manufacturing, and we have been a sponsor for a number of the SAP Innovation Summits, including in 2017 in Macau and Fort Lauderdale. We work with the SAP Business One Partner Channel globally, and we've been a part of the SAP APJ Growth Series. For this particular slide, I just wanted to let you know why we integrate with SAP Business One HANA using the service layer. What's a really good thing to know is that ours is a loosely coupled application. And we use the service layer, which is a REST or RESTful API, for business objects and processes of SAP Business One. Meaning, when our warehouse management solution passes information or grabs information through the service layer of SAP Business One, not only is it in real time, but it uses the same business rules and processes of SAP Business One. With a loosely coupled architecture, you can choose to locate your solution not within SAP Business One Core. And this is a really important bit of information. Our warehouse management solution can be hosted on any on-cloud or on-premises environment which is separate to your SAP Business One. So I could be hosting our warehouse management solution here in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, and you could be running your SAP Business One HANA database on AWS anywhere in the world. Another part to know is, given the fact that we have our warehouse management solution hosted anywhere in the world, it allows us to easily deploy new features without changing SAP Business One. And one of the biggest reasons to know about a loosely coupled architecture is about knowing that there's machine learning, mobility, Internet of Things and blockchain all coming up and ensuring that we need to make sure that our warehouse management solution covers all of these features. So visit that blog, which is a fantastic blog to understand about loosely coupled applications to read about more information on the service layer. If you want to contact us, Email us at sales at therickgroup.com or visit our website and always feel free to visit our YouTube channel to see further information. Okay, so what I want to do is take you through purchase order and then retrieving that on our warehouse management solution and going through the receiving and put away process. So I'm going to create a purchase order. I'm going to create it for Far East Imports. I'm going to create two items. Now what I'm going to do is choose these two R items. And what we're going to know is that these items have a unit of measure or a purchasing unit of measure, and we can see that it's 4848. So let's have a look at the item. And when we go into purchasing, you can see that the unit of measure code is pallet. And we can see that the pallet has been defined in a unit of measure, and the pallet is 48 or 48 packs. And within that, We've got our two barcodes that represent the pack at the moment. So what I've done here is created a purchase order for two items with a different unit of measure showing you that the SAP uh, Business One and, all, and the process with our warehouse management solution follows the same rules. So let's add that. So we can see here that purchase order 491 has been made. So if I minimize this, what I'm going to do is just bring up the team viewer because I've team viewed into our Android uh, Cypher Lab RS50 device and that's running an Android 6 environment. So now using the device, using the drop down menu, I can now go to receiving. And when I go to receiving, it's going to have a look to see if there's any open purchase orders to receive against and give me that list. So on the device, the list is loaded, but I know that it's from Far East Imports. So when I choose Far East Imports, you can see that the document number 491 
is now here. So 491, and we can see here that we've come across and we're asking the user to receive the quantities of 48 and 48. Notice that it was one pallet or 48 packs. So when I go and have a look at this item, I can now drill into this item, and what I'm going to do is receive it. So this particular item, I'm going to actually over-receive. So I could be scanning it, and I could scan a pallet barcode, and it will say 48. But for this purpose, I'm going to say 52 and add that. And we can see here that the audit says, no problems, we've uh, had a quantity of 52. And go back to the purchase order lines. And now I can receive the next item. Note that multiple devices could be doing the receiving. So for this particular item, I'm going to choose 48. And I'm going to add that. And we can see that. And I'm going to go back to the PO lines. And we can see that I've received these two items. And then back to the purchase order list. So after receiving the goods and doing your QA process to make sure that goods pass the QA, you then go into the put away process. So on the menu, I can now choose put away. And when I go to put away, I'm going to be given the same options almost as we're receiving. However, what I want to do is put away the items into a bin location. So again, I'm going to have a look at the uh, Far East imports. And then I'm going to say, OK, 491. I know that I'm working on document number 491. And click into 491. I can see my two items. Here they are, including the over-received quantity. Remember on the purchase order for the A4 white paper here, it was actually only 48. But I've got my over-received quantity. And drill into the item. Now, what I want to do is I've picked up the item and I'm putting away. And I want to scan the bin location. So note that I've got now the bin location, and I can add my quantity. What I'm going to do is just say I'm going to add 48. And then now I can scan another bin location. And I know there's a remaining four to put away. And I have 48 and four. So I've put away this item into two bin locations. Note that I actually have a default bin location, which for this instance is going to be the actual pick face. So this is my pick face. However, I've put the items in these two bin locations, 48 and 4. So if I go back, I'll have my 0002 item. And for this, uh, oops, for this particular item, I'm just going to put away into a bin, and, I, and it's 48. And I'm going to add that. So you can see that I've added my uh, 48 here to the line. And when I go back, I've completed my put away process. And it goes automatically back into SAP Business One. There's no, um, just going to SAP now. So we notice it was 491. If I refresh, it is now closed. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to go to the relationship map. And then I'm going to open up the goods receipt PO. So with the goods receipt PO, because we've completed the put away process, the two items that are going to be put away or updated into their um, you know, bin locations. Just note here that when we've received the quantity, it is by, by pallet. And because we've received 52, which is over the pallet, it's a um, you know incremental quantity. So. I'm going to go into the bin allocation list and you can see here that I've got my two bin locations that I've put away the item of 48 and 4. So it's updated the receipt with the actual put away and when I go into the second item we can see 48 into this bin location. So what we've done here is created the fact where you can do the receipt and then do the put away and the put away will update the goods receipt with the actual bin locations that you received from. The second part I just want to show you is the stock lookup feature. And if I go onto the device, I can go into uh, stock lookup. And on the stock lookup, I'm able to scan items. And it will pull back information such as warehouse information, um, quantity on hand by that bin. So. The, it's actually quite quick. 
So when I go back and pull back that information, the software is actually looking up SAP Business One at that current time. So as soon as I hit the scan button and I scan the barcode, it goes and does a live lookup in SAP Business One HANA and returns the information. So everything that you see is in real time in SAP Business One. So again, I could do a search, do a manual search, and I can see the item and have that item updated onto the device. So it gives a group, it gives a user a real easy ability to scan the scan the item and say, okay, well, what should be my quantity in hand in the bin locations uh, at this current time? And then also allows you to be able to check the barcodes of the items and then if you've got multipliers added to that. Thank you for listening. Appreciate your time. As I say, feel free to email us at sales at the Rick Group if you want further information.